Hi, and welcome back to live at FDIC again. Brought to you all week at FDIC International 2024 by Firehouse Subs. I like to think of this as the, the Firehouse Sub Studio. We're coming at you live from the Firehouse Sub Studio. Anyway, today, or this for this segment, I am with Bill Gardner with ESO. He is the senior director of fire there, and he has promised that if I have to put my glasses on to read some of the questions, he's going to do the same for me, just so I don't feel too out of place. But So, Bill, thank you for joining me today. Oh, absolutely. And yes. um, I think just to get us started, um, how long has ESO been in the RMS industry? And for those who don't know, it's record management system, uh, RMS industry, and what makes you different from other RMS providers? Oh, those are great questions, Chris. Thank you. Uh, first off, I have to say, sitting in the firehouse studio, I, the first thing I think of is a hook and ladder sandwich. So we'll, we'll start there. Uh, no, ESO has been around. Uh, we're celebrating our 20th year. Okay. And when you think about electronic records, most people don't even place that they've been functioning or been a standard part of uh, EMS and fire for that length of time. But, yeah, we're starting our 20th year. And I think the part that has made us be able, when so many others have come and gone, has been able to stick around is we are a RMS system created by fire and EMS people who were frustrated with what we were having to deal with on the street that created this system and then went back to our customers in an ongoing manner to tell us what we needed to do next. And that's, that's made us have longevity. And the big part that's really helped us is our ability to take and collect that data mm -hmm. and then share it. Okay. And that, that's made us uh, significantly different than a lot of vendors that come and go that just are looking to fill a, a gap is they don't have the experience of being in the industry. Mm -hmm. They don't know uh, how quickly I really want to fill out a 3 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. alarm activation call. Uh, they don't understand uh, the ability to make sure that I can complete my record on that critical patient because I need five minutes. I need five minutes to get back to who I need to be. And we understood that, and we understand that and work through that. And then taking that data that we've collected and using it to improve fire, EMS, and hospital, we, we have the ability to track and deal with from the time someone hits the one out of 911 mm -hmm. until they're discharged out of the hospital and take all of that data and paint that picture of what that means to collect from the time the developer walks in with a set of plans and says, oh, I want to build something here mm -hmm. till all the events that took place at that, and, you know, it's, it's from dirt to dirt. And we have that and can tell the story with that and then share that data with others to tell the story. Now, having been around 20 years now, um, you have a tremendous amount of data uh, oh. from over time. And that, that not only would allow you, I, I figure, to not only drive research, but also participate in research projects. So what are some of the current research programs ESO uh, is currently releasing? Oh, um, that, I, I laugh. If, if we didn't have to have RMS products to collect data, we probably wouldn't have them because data is what makes the change. Data helps us create an environment to make it safer for the men and women on the streets every day. The data helps us do those things. So we do. We've been very fortunate to have great partners that have agreed to allow their data to come into what we call a data collaborative. Mm -hmm. That data collaborative is open for research, not just for us, but we work with both academia. We work with national researchers from uh, physicians, uh, those that do research and improvement, uh, healthcare. And then we have four uh, full-time researchers and people working in our building that work to take that data to make sure that it's being used for the right things. We have been blessed to be able to testify in legislative events, helping clarify fact over fiction. Uh -huh with what healthcare does and with what pre-hospital healthcare has done. Uh, we just completed a, a research paper on a retrospective study of actual collected data from responders compared against the Lavender Ribbon Report. Okay. We know there's a problem, 
we've all assumed this. I actually have the ability to walk through, and that research was sent out, was peer reviewed, and was published in a occupational journal, medicine um, magazine, because they felt like that was a significant item of being able to do. And where are those things? And when you take that and you look at that, of uh, we we assume there's problems, but when you can break it down by size of an agency, the rank of the people, the age, you can look at that information and we can take that information and compare it back to your local area, mm-hmm. give you the ability to run that report. That's how we improve those things and make sure our men and women are going home. Gotcha. Um, so those are just a couple of things. We've got a couple of items going on right now that uh, we're going to be rolling out uh, throughout the country. There's, there's a significant wildland fire issue mm-hmm. in this country. We've seen it, it throughout North sure. America that yep. we've all dealt with over the past couple of years. And, uh, you know, Dr. Laurie and the U.S. Fire Administration have had a lot of conversations about we've got to get better at that. To help support that, we're going to be putting uh, the Wildland Irwin Collection Field and information in all of our fire incident products for our customers with, at no additional cost to be able to collect and report on that because we've got to get better data. So mm-hmm. those are some of the research and projects that we're doing, some of the things that are taking place today. Well, let's get, you know, I guess kind of into, you know, the fire and EMS side of it. Data is certainly a driver. Yes. Um, you know, we just, we just established that. Um, but it's certainly a driver for the fire service. How does ESO help meet the goal for fire and EMS agencies? Uh, I think the, the part of it is every year, we just released our fire index, which is a, a global snapshot of what's taking place across the country mm-hmm. uh, out of that collaborative. This year I had, you know, well over 6 million fire records mm-hmm. alone wow. that were just from this past year to look at mm-hmm. that are, are fresh that were done in this past year and see what that is. But by doing that and then giving you the ability to run a similar report out of our data mm-hmm. for your agency, that gives you a benchmark. We can't improve things we don't measure. As we go through uh, the nearest transition uh, throughout the next 18 months, it's, it's going to be a really significant factor to make sure what we're measuring, how we're improving that, and measuring what we do in the modern fire service. And that's, that's a great opportunity. And we're going to be able to start capturing that data, start looking at that data as we go forward, while still keeping the traditional data and do some crosswalk studies okay. over years. Mm-hmm. And that's gonna be really uh, improvement for people uh, in the fire service. But the ability to see, we, we write national standards and mm-hmm. nothing against national standards, but they're not always comparable to every organization based off of staffing, population, distance to events, uh, water supplies, all of those things that you and I both know impact mm-hmm. what we do sure. on the street every yep. day. Um, this gives you the ability to have data to educate your community, your elected officials, the people that have the money to make improvements and then show them that that investment, Mm -hmm. here's the return because we were able to touch this many more lives. The ability to measure and show impacts of the calls we didn't have has always been a challenge for the Mm -hmm. fire service. We have the ability to show some things now with data and the data collection to start showing not just sayings from the events we had, but because we had a community event and it was in this area, yep. this is what we did. Uh, we tracked out, we gave out this many smoke detectors. I have all the addresses we put them at, all of this. Now all of a sudden we've seen a decrease mm-hmm. in those events. It's measurable. It's measurable. That's what the elected officials want. And quite honestly, that's what we should want to give our citizens is what's helping, what's working. And then if that worked and you and I are similar sized communities and we're similar size and what we do, then share that with me mm-hmm. so I can go make a difference. Uh, the fire service has always gone to help each other. You know, as brothers and sisters, we've helped each other. We haven't always done that as well in our risk reduction programs and some things. And we're seeing significant improvement in education about wanting to do risk reduction. We've act, actually have improvement from, uh, you know, when you look at ISO for risk reduction and the mm-hmm. addition that's come through the past several years there, 
the ability for improvement uh, for even local agencies to have risk reduction programs to prevent the need for EMS, mm -hmm. to do things to prevent uh, a taxing, which is occurring on our fire and EMS responders. Those are the things we have to do. And those are the things that we help provide data for you to improve on. I've, I've, in my own department, been able to see that sort of data in action, you know, in, in terms of, you know, exactly what you said, you know, justifying an expense on something, um, measuring what we do besides, I'm in a volunteer house, yep. so measuring what we do beyond coming to the firehouse for, for the fire call. So, I mean, so I'm, I'm, I'm a believer. I'm a believer in the, in the data end of things. Absolutely. I, I think that's a great point. We look at recruitment and retention across the country. It, you know, uh, there's some struggles. Uh, I think I'm, I'm an optimist at heart. Mm -hmm. I think that there's people that want to be back involved. They want to help the community. Mm -hmm. And being in the fire service is one of the best ways to do that ever. Mm -hmm. it, it's been great. You know, my 35 years, I've been blessed to be involved in seeing a lot of great things happen. Mm -hmm. um, with that, people want to know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And the ability to track and record those activities beyond just going to a call, you know, gives this younger generation that's looking, you know, they're looking to change the world and they're trying mm -hmm. and we should help them. Yep, absolutely. Um, it gives them the ability to record that because you and I started out, we didn't track some of those things mm -hmm. very well. We didn't track the number of hours we spent uh, right. at a fundraiser. Mm -hmm. But how many people did we touch that right. moment? Exactly. We've got to get better at that. We, the tools have to be easier for people to do that. And those tools have to be standardized and approachable so that we can measure that, not just in one department, but we can measure it across the country. And we as fire service have to grasp, and Nearest is gonna help us do that, mm -hmm. uh, grasp the ability that I, I'm not an island unto myself, so my data can't be an island unto myself. We've gotta figure out a way for all of us to share that. Okay. Speaking of Nearest, um, what did ESO do to prepare itself for, for Nearest? Oh, so we have, what has it been doing? So we have, we have committed resources. I have a full-time uh, engineering team that's already done that. The mock-ups have been there. Mm -hmm. They've worked through those things. We have been very fortunate to spend some time. Um, I will tell you, the U.S. Fire Administrator and uh, Rebecca Hearn over there that's running that project, uh, Craig and Steve over at FSRI, they're very inclusive. You just have to make an opportunity to ask questions. Mm -hmm. They've opened that up, and we've taken those opportunities to ask those questions. And I know that if you have those things, they want to hear. Uh, Tom Jenkins is out running all over the country <laughs> uh, to find out what people want, how they feel about that. And so we've taken advantage of all of that. So our teams have already committed into working through that okay. and making those things. And that development work uh, is forthcoming. And we'll be showing people as we build it in our applications, our customers that have our applications, we'll get a chance to see those changes as they're coming forward. Uh, it's one thing to say I'm going to do it. It's another thing when you put it out there and people see it every day, the right. work that's coming. <laughs> and so we're open to that. And we think that that is a great way, not only just to prepare leadership mm -hmm. for this change, but for the men and women in that, that station that have to fill that report, if they're seeing it coming every day, by the time we get there and by the time we get everything transitioned, the chances are that they've adapted to that change a little easier. Cool. Well, again, this has been Chris McClune with Bill Gardner with ESO for FDIC, for live at FDIC. Again, I'd like to thank our sponsor for the week, Firehouse Subs. And, Bill, I'd like to thank you for sitting down with me for a few minutes and talking to me about ESO. Absolutely. Um, we invite anyone that's here at FDIC this week to come see us, ask Good. questions. And for everyone, be safe. Thank you all. I can hold it. Bye. Bye.